Morning, Chris, Champion the Camp, Moto Legends. Slightly different format this morning. I'm recording this at home. Normally, obviously, we record these in the shop in Guildford, but for various reasons, I'm recording this at home. The reason we're here really is to announce the arrival of the Shui Glamster. And we are very thrilled. It's a helmet we've been waiting for for a long while. Um, it was delayed a couple of times earlier in the year, but it's arrived in the warehouse yesterday, so it's about to go out. So we wanted to refresh ourselves. We wanted to take one fresh out of the box, check that it was what we thought it, it was, and go through it. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna go and take it for a little ride. Now, for over five years, we were petitioning what I would call the high-end makers of motorcycle helmets to produce a retro helmet. And I'm talking about the likes of Arai, Shui, Shark, and Shuba. But about three years ago, Shui came to see us. They sent a delegation over to the UK. I hasten to add that they didn't come purely to see us at Moto Legends. They were seeing a number of different dealers. And they came over to talk about graphics on their future helmets. Now, when that meeting was over, what we said to them was, can we pitch an idea to you? And they said, yes. And then we spent another half an hour talking through our ideas about retro helmets. And our basic point was that the bike park has changed. The, a lot of bikers are moving away from sports bikes, aggressive, fast sporting machines. We're all slowing down a wee bit. We're going more for retro bikes. Clearly I'm talking about bikes like the R9T, the Kawasaki Z900 RS, the Moto Guzzi V7, lots of those kind of bikes. That brings with it a certain aesthetic. Now, there are, there are and there were, when we spoke to Shui, a number of what you would call retro helmets on the market, but we didn't think any of them were very good. They certainly, none of them were what we would call high-end safety helmets. Often they looked fantastic, they had great graphics and so on, but we felt that there was a need for a modern, a more modern 21st century quality retro helmet, because the bikes we're talking about these are not bikes that you just poodle around on. You can poodle around on them. I poodle around on mine, but you can go much faster on them. You can go touring on them. You can certainly do motorway speeds all day. And if you've got one of these retro bikes and you're wearing one of those retro helmets, they are just not up to the job. Most of them, it's got to be said, don't fit particularly well. They, some of them have this pudding basin shape, so it's very difficult to get a nice fit on the cheeks. Some of them have a chin bar that basically touches the chin, rather disconcerting to ride in, we've found. A lot of them are very noisy. None of them have chin curtains. You've got air that just comes in around the bottom of the helmet, comes in the visor because the visors don't seal well. Venting was never a strength on some of these helmets. Some had absolutely no venting at all. Some had far too much venting because again, because the visor didn't seal, air would just come in. On one of them in particular that I'm thinking about, you could put your finger up between the visor and the shell. So they didn't have variable venting. It meant that in the rain, rain would pour in. None of them had a pin lock. None of them were really up to the job of riding today, as it were. So we put this to Shui, they took furious notes. We don't know what, what the level of influence we had on them was, because let's face it, Arai got there on their own, they didn't need us, so I'm sure Shui would have got there. I'd like to feel that we had some influence on Shui, and certainly ever since that meeting, they've kept us informed of progress, and we knew a while ago that the helmet was going to be arriving this year. So whether we had any influence on this helmet or not, it's not really a germane, it makes us feel, feel better, but what we are just pleased to say is that the helmet is now here. It's kind of the helmet that we wanted with one minor detail, which I'll talk about in the next section. It's pretty much the perfect helmet as far as we're concerned. But what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take the helmets, we're gonna look at them, we're just gonna go around them and look at them in a little bit more detail. So this is the Shui Glamster, the final production version of the Shui Glamster. Now, we're recording this just before Easter 2020. And what I can tell you is that initially it's only come in in a small range of colors and sizes. More are gonna come later. So at present, we have the gray, the gloss black, the slightly off white, and the matte black. It's only available right now in sizes small, medium, and large. So later on, and we're hoping this will happen in May, 
we will receive extra small and we will receive extra large and double extra large. In terms of colors, there are three graphic treatments. It's the same graphic treatment, but it comes in different colors of that graphic treatment. We are also hoping to see those in May. There is another solid color, a color. it's called Laguna Blue. It's a beautiful blue. And again, we hope to see that in May, latest June. If the helmet looks a little bit familiar, it is because the shell is very much based on the shell that is used on the X0 and on the JO. So let me just move some of these out of the way. It's the same sloping shell. It's a very pleasing shape, very aerodynamic shape. And you've got this little cam tail at the back. That's the telltale sound. If you were to have a look at an X0 or a JO, you would see that it's exactly the same. In common with, the, with both of those helmets, it's got the AIM shell, that's Shuey's advanced integrated matrix shell. It's a combination of glass fibers and organic fibers. They use it across all of their high-end lids. It creates a medium density shell, and this isn't the time and place to go into it in great detail, but a medium density shell, in our view, is the perfect shell. You get some shells that are very hard, take immense impacts, but don't absorb energy. You have very soft shells that don't take impacts well, but absorb energy. What you want is something in the middle, and that's exactly what you get with the AIM shell. In terms of sizes, the helmet comes in six sizes, as I've kind of alluded to. So extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, and double extra large. Comes in three shell sizes. That's sufficient. Some helmets come in four shell sizes, but three, I think, is a perfectly adequate number of shell sizes to ensure a comfortable fit, especially when you can change all the internal uh, parts. When you get down to two shell sizes, you're sliding, you're starting to compromise fit a little bit. When you get down to one shell size, then really we don't take that particularly seriously as a helmet. In addition to the three shell sizes, you have four different EPS sizes. So it's a multi-density EPS in this helmet. Different parts of the helmet have different thicknesses and it varies depending on where the EPS, it varies in thickness. So we have four different EPSs in this helmet. So extra small and small share an EPS. Medium has its own EPS. Large has its own EPS. And then extra large and double extra large share an EPS again. We will have within this helmet, and it's one of the things that we particularly love about Shoeys. It's why we feel we can make them fit 95% of people. We will have the opportunity to change the cheek pads for thinner or thicker cheek pads and the headliner as well. So. It's all very easily done, and we are pretty skilled at doing this in the shop in Guildford. So we take that out. That will be a standard cheek pad size. There'll be a thicker one and a thinner one. So if you're finding that it's not giving you a sufficient squeeze, if it's a wee bit loose, we'll put a thicker one in. If the, if the size around the head is perfect, but it's a little bit tight on, on the cheeks, then we can loosen it and give you a little bit more room in there. We've got the same facility with the headliner as the cheek pad, so three different fittings. Easily done, but by a combination of changing the headliners and the cheek pads, we really do feel that we can nearly always make an, a Shoei helmet fit really well. The good news is that this is exactly the same headliner as you get in a JO, so this one is available now. The cheek pads will come on a future um, a shipment so they're not quite available yet so we cannot do a proper custom fitting right now but we can change the headliner what should we have said is if somebody buys a helmet and the cheek pads need to be changed later they will swap those out at no cost at the right time it's a very compact very lightweight helmet the aim shell is very light anyway but should we have gone to great pains to make this as simple and light a helmet as they can. It's kind of a back to basics helmet. I don't want that to sound rude, but they've tried to make it retro in its appeal. So all the things that you find on modern helmets that add weight and complexity, they've taken off this helmet. It actually comes in, this is the large size, it comes in at 1250 grams. If I were to put this next to the Arai, we love the Arai, it's a great lid, but the way Arai do things, they have an extra super thick shell, and then they have to have a compensating EPS that's also very thick. So Arai's tend to be much bigger and much heavier. Some people like that, but if you want a helmet for the weekend, if you want something that's easy to wear, um, this is gonna be a much nicer helmet for most people. 
In terms of the functionality, let's just go around the helmet and look at the various things it has. Um, it's got vents here. I've mentioned that with some of the retro helmets, venting was a, um, an afterthought, as it were. We have two vents here. This is gonna send air around the back of the helmet to exhaust at the back through these two little holes here. Um, the vents actually, these chin vents are not controllable. So they're just permanently open. However, the vents on the forehead are, so you've got two vents here. This is gonna channel air through the EPS and again, out through the back of the helmet. In the box, the helmet comes with a Pinlock Evo. That's Shoei's equivalent. It's a um, Pinlock that's made specifically for Shoei, but it's basically a Pinlock 120. That is the best quality Pinlock that you can get. In terms of the, the, the visor itself, um, it's a very clever visor. I think sure you're using this on one other helmet in the range. It's an NXR helmet, but we quite like the kind of retro look and feel of this. You're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver to undo it and adjust it. What it does, it cantilevers as you open the, the visor. So it pulls away from the lid and then it pulls it back in. And the reason it does that is to stop the pin lock scratching against the beading which does happen in some helmets. In fact, Shark had a bit of a, a major issue with it with their Evo 1 helmet that when you opened it and closed it, the pin lock was just catching, leaving marks down the visor. But this cantilevering of the visor here is designed very much to ensure that that doesn't happen. Very clever new beading arrangement. Shui have developed this beading, they call it window beading. It is new for the Shui Glamster. They reckon it works particularly well. It's gonna make the helmet particularly resistant to water ingress and is going to make it quieter too. What you can do, you can adjust this, you can pull this tighter if you want, because if over time that seal lackens and you notice that air is getting in or cold air is getting in or maybe even a drop of rain, you can adjust it and tighten it. You also have a very useful locking mechanism here that locks into place so it won't accidentally come undone. You pull it away and then I've always had, had a problem with this. It's difficult to do with, with that hand. There we go. So it's a locking mechanism. You will get the feel for that very quick, quickly. It's not a, pr a problem with, with gloved hands. It's just that when you're not wearing it, it's sometimes a little bit tricky to do. Um, in terms of the interior, all these surfaces are matte surfaces. The idea being that that's not gonna reflect in the visor. Even here in the upper part of the, um, covering it in the helmet, that's a new buck finish so that that again doesn't reflect light, but all the bottom and all the bottom surfaces, this is a more cleanable finish, just makes it easier to look after the helmet. It's a retro helmet, so should we have deemed that it's got to have a D-ring? We really don't have a strong view either way, but I suppose it's correct that if you're riding a retro bike, you want to have that retro feel, a D-ring perhaps seems a little bit more appropriate. If there's one thing missing from the helmet, as far as we're concerned, it's a drop-down sun visor. Um, not quite sure what the thinking was. I have a view, I know what the thinking was, but given the kind of bikes that you could be riding on this, I've mentioned before that the retro bikes we're talking about, it's not as though they top out at 60 miles an hour. We're talking about bikes that you can be doing proper speeds down the motorway on. You can go touring on those kind of bikes. I cannot see why you wouldn't want a drop visor in a helmet like this. I think it would have completed it, but I think the thinking probably was that when you put a drop down visor in, you do two things. You make the helmet a little bit larger, you make it more complex, but you make it larger. And I think the thinking was they wanted this to be as compact and light as possible. You also do, when you have an aperture to put a drop down visor in, you also, that um, void, as it were, that creates noise. So I know Stewie wanted this to be a very quiet helmet. So I'm sure the thinking was, it was a trade off between the utility of a, of a drop down sun visor and keeping the helmet small and keeping it quiet. So anyway, that's the helmet. It is very much the helmet we wanted. It's similar to the Arai. I think it's better looking potentially than the Arai. The Arai has got that slightly Simpson banditesque nose that I think detracts from it working on a certain kind of classic bike. Because remember, this is a, a helmet that you don't just have to wear on a modern retro. This is gonna work well on a, on a real red retro. So I think it's exactly what we wanted. I think it's a fabulous lid. What I'm gonna do, I'm now gonna take it for a ride, I'm gonna ride into work. Now, before a lot of you just jump up and down and say, you're not allowed to go out and ride on it. I think that technically, because this is my work, because I review 
products for a living. I think I'm probably allowed to, but all I'm going to do, the reason that I'm recording this at home is I'm just going to ride into work in it. Now, I'm going to take a very slight detour. I have a 92-year-old mother-in-law. Last night, she texted. There was four lines of gobbledygook, but hidden within that gobbledygook was the one word that we understood, which is milk. So I'm going to go a slightly long way around. It's about three or four miles extra on my normal route. I'm going to go around and drop that off and then I'm going to ride into work. When I get into work, I'm going to do the final part of this video. We're going to see what we felt about it on the road. Right. Let's see how this helmet performs on the road. First thing I've got to tell you is this is not my bike. Lock to the visor. That feels nice and secure. Okay, let's get out of here. Let me just adjust the mirrors. Let's go. One thing I have to admit is that beautiful as this bike is, I really do not like it. I know that sounds sacrilegious. This is a beautiful, exotic machine. But increasingly these days, when I go out for a ride, I like to poodle around, I like to take my time. And this particular bike is like a thoroughbred horse. It just wants to race everywhere. So normally I would be turning left here to go into work. But given that I'm visiting Sarah's mum on an aid mission, I'm turning right. When I was in the kitchen and going through the helmet, one of the things that I was having problems with was the locking mechanism for the visor. In fact, it's very easy. It's much more intuitive once it's on your lid, once it's on, once it's on your head. You actually, there's a scallop shape for the finger. You are kind of pressing it. You're not pulling it out. You're not pulling it up. You're pressing it in and then it kind of lifts away. So I'm just gonna, I've still got it open at, at present just to allow a bit of air in, but I'm gonna close it now and lock it into place. Now it does feel nice. We are the experts. We like to think at Moto Legends when it comes to custom fitting helmets, particularly the shoes. We always carry in stock all of their cheek pads and headliners for just about every model. And we reckon that we can get a perfect fit on 95% of people. It's only going to be if you've got a much rounder head, a head that might suit, say, a Sharp or a Shoebeth that we will give up and say a shoe just isn't for you. So there's no buffeting. I'm really pleased with the steel division. I think this is a helmet that gives away nothing in terms of its functionality. I suppose the closest helmet with which to compare it is the RYD, a similar helmet, not quite as cool looking as this, no sun visors, so similar in terms of concept, and this feels very similar, as I suppose you would expect it to. Now given that it's a nice day, I'm not bothered with a pin lock, I'm not going to need it on a day like today, obviously a pin lock comes into its own when you're generating hot breath and the air outside is very cold, but that's not going to happen today. That, that I've got the venting, venting open, that's going to give us a nice airflow. Does it make any difference when I close the vents in terms of noise? I'm not wearing earplugs today and I couldn't discern a great deal of difference. This is obviously a naked bike, it's going to always be a little bit on the noisy side. And really, however quiet a helmet is, you should always be wearing earplugs. So, I don't feel that this helmet is any noisier than the RYD that I've ridden in a lot. 
maybe not quite in the same league as my Shubert C3 Pro, but that's a different kind of power. So I suppose one of the questions is, how do we compare this with the Arai? They do a similar job. They're both retro-styled lids, but both with modern 21st century functionality. Sean, who's our shop manager, he's Mr. Know-it-all. I mean, he really is the nerdiest motorcycle apparel guy in the world. He is fantastic. He knows everything. And when he's not in the shop, he just goes home and reads more about it on the internet. So we value his opinion very highly. He kind of prefers the Arai, but he is a big mileage rider. He commutes every day from the center of town. He does huge miles in a year. And he thinks that for his kind of riding, he just feels that the Arai is a bit more solid. And I think this is kind of the view we came to when we, when we once did a quick ride on this helmet that before. I think this is gonna be an easier helmet to live with, it's lighter. I've got to say it's incredibly comfortable. But if you're a weekend rider, then I think this is the helmet to go for. If you're trying to combine these retro looks with a with modern commuting, if you're someone who does 10, 15,000 miles a year, then I suppose you could put a case for the RI. But I think this helmet's a lot easier to ride in. It's a lot nicer to ride in a, in a way. So in terms of price, this helmet is pretty much where we would expect it to be. Priced at £400. The RI is £450. The RYD, which is a similar helmet to the Blamster, albeit without its cool looks, was 350. It's actually now been reduced because that helmet is a helmet that's going to sell out. But that at 350, this at 400, that feels about right. And in terms of value for money, whilst you can pay less money for a helmet. You can always pay less for something. For what this offers, I think it's pretty well priced. And certainly, looking at some of the prices of the retro helmets, I just think they are crazily priced. I was looking at one the other day. It had a fancy paint job, but it was, I have to admit, a cool looking helmet, a lovely leather trimmed interior cool graphics but it was I think 780 pounds it was for that price you can get a Shui Neotech with comms I know they do a different thing but at some point you have to have some kind of eye for value for money and maybe if you're just spending all that money just to look cool I question question priorities. So that's why I hate this bike. It just wants to do that all the time. It doesn't like to be ridden in a gentle manner doesn't really feel as though it's coming alive until you hit something like 12,000 revs. And by the time you get there, whatever gear you're in, you're going way too fast. So the last time I went out for a ride in a Glamster, I went out in the pre-production version. In truth, I didn't know that I wasn't allowed to. They sent the helmet to me for a review, so I took it for a ride. It was a miserable day and we didn't really make a very good fist of it. The video wasn't very good. We didn't have the right equipment. Um, got into a lot of trouble afterwards because it was a pre-production version and I think everyone was worried what might have happened if there had been an accident. 
not sure this helmet feels vastly different, a bit more comfortable maybe. But it's still recognisable as the same helmet. I could get into trouble also for being rude about the name. So I'm going to take this opportunity to apologise to Shui in Japan, to Shui in Germany, and to the importer of Shui in the UK, and to say that I made a mistake. The Glamster is a fabulous name for a helmet. I wish I'd come up with it all on my own. Anyway, that's enough of that. So as I mentioned in the kitchen, not all of the colours, not all of the sizes have come into stock. We've had the two blacks, matte and shiny. We've had the grey and the white. And we've only had some sizes. Now normally, the regular clockwork, whenever Shuri releases a new helmet, the missing variants come in about a month later. I think that might not happen this time round because of problems with the coronavirus. I'm sure that there will be issues at ports and factories and so on. So I don't know quite when we'll see the missing sizes, but it won't be too long. I do think that Shuri have got it just about spot on. The Arai Rapid Neo is a great lid, but it's not as pretty as this. It's not quite as appropriate. It's got a bit more, I suppose you might say, a bit more of a street biter look. Nothing wrong with that, but it just means that it doesn't look quite as good on some bikes. For example, if you had a real retro bike, if you were buying some kind of Triumph or BSA or Norton from the 60s or 70s, I think this helmet would work well. I'm not sure that the RI would look as good. So that's been it. I'm not pretending that this has been a long journey. Obviously, we don't have the luxury of going on a long trip today or for the foreseeable future. So I'm sure we will end up doing reports further down the road when we've lived with the helmet a little bit longer. But even though shoes have not always worked for me, this feels lovely. No problems with this. So that was the Shoei Glamster. I hope you enjoyed our little review. Now, if you'd like to see more helmets, perhaps more retro helmets, visit the website motolegends.com. If you want to learn more about the Glamster specifically, then if you click on one of the links on the screen, sometimes they're up there, sometimes down there, that will take you directly to the relevant page on our website. There you can check out the spec in a bit more detail. You can check out availability. And if you're particularly taken with the helmet, you can order one there and then, obviously. Now, when you buy from us, we try to make the process as simple, straightforward, and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on anything you buy from us. Returns are also free, and we give you a full 12 months in which to make up your mind as to whether you want to return something to us. We have the best price promise guarantee in the business. John Lewis is rightly famed for its never knowingly undersold price promise. We go one stage better. If you can find anything, that we sell being sold by someone else at a price that is cheaper than ours, we will beat that retailer's price by a full 10%. If the retailer is in the EU and not in the UK, we will match their landed price. Now, there are a few terms and conditions, nothing particularly onerous, but if you are going to price beat us, I suggest you visit the website and check out the terms and conditions. If in future you'd like to see bulletins from us about new products, then if you go to the website at the top of every page, there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up. Click on there, within seconds you'll be in business. In future you'll receive bulletins from us. If, however, you would prefer to get your information from us videographically, in other words, in this form, we would be simply delighted if you wanted to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Now, this year, and it's 2020, we're going to be giving away what we are calling a Steve McQueen tribute bike. It's based on a Mutz 125cc machine. It's a lovely little bike. You can read all about it on the front page of our website or on the home page of our YouTube channel. But in essence, we're going to give it away just before Christmas to somebody who is a subscriber to our YouTube channel. So if you want to stand a chance of winning that bike, then I suggest that you subscribe. As I said, hit the button down below. Finally, I'd like to make a play for our fabulous shop here at Moto Legends. We are based about a mile from the center of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. 
The shop itself is pretty small, it's got a small footprint, but it's attached to our warehouse with more than two million pounds worth of merchandise arranged over three floors. It technically makes us the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the UK. But we think that we are more than just about the merchandise, the amount of merchandise we have in, in the building. We are about service, we're about personal fitting. If you wanna check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest five-star ranking in the business. When you come and see us, we'll serve you only the finest Italian Illy coffee, or we'll give you proper Yorkshire tea served in a proper teapot. If you're really lucky, you might get one of Sean's mum's delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.